Hey guys, here I'm going to show you how to unwrap a character. I'm going to use one of our main characters for one of our intellectual properties, Fistful of Magic. Um, I'm going to use the main character here. He actually has another set of arms if you're wondering about the hole in his back here. Another set of arms that he can summon. And he's a cowboy in a mythological old west. That's right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap this guy. I'm going to show you how to approach it. Now this model, um, I had reconstructed the head based on earlier... Uh, designs that we had and uh, another artist uh, giving him some props Daniel Jane had helped with the reconstruction of his body his hands the coat and some of the other features on him as well as start the rig on this guy so we need to go back a little bit though and do some editing on this guy and get him all set up he's all part of a series pitch we'll be trying to promote here with the next few months if I don't die and trying to make it so what we're gonna do here is I'm going to show you how to approach unwrapping a character. Now he already has some assets that are unwrapped. Um, I've had to redo them a couple times because they weren't quite unwrapped as efficiently as I like. And in this case, because he has a jacket on, I make the head, notice the head is quite bigger than the rest of the pieces of the body. You'll also notice that I isolated and did not include the ears. I made them separate. And over here I made, I cut them out and I cut the eyes out and the interior of the mouth. And you have to do that when it comes to unwrapping but let me show you the theory behind it one of the better ways to approach unwrapping so let's go to faces mode for a second here I'm gonna to go to his side view actually before I do that let me move him a little bit out of the way so we don't mess up our selection as we get things going here move him back a little bit there we go I'm gonna hit the F key fit him into view and I'm gonna to go to faces so what we'll start off with I'm gonna show you how to approach the head when it comes to rigging the head because it can be tricky for some people or not rigging excuse me texturing unwrapping have to focus new topic so I've been on rigging for so long I don't want to I don't want to confuse you guys so what we're gonna do is we're gonna unwrap this head so let me show you how to do that the best and the most efficient way so let's just grab generically some faces so I can get my camera zoomed in hitting the F key so you'll notice he has ears in, uh, ocular cavity and inside of a mouth so whenever you're grabbing a head for a character, you want to make sure that you leave those areas out when it comes to beginning to unwrap. And one of the faster ways to do that is we can go in here and use the paint selection tool set on faces. And let me go in here and get the B key to lower my brush size a bit. And again, that's found right here, right underneath your marquee selection. They stole that from 3D Studio Max, if you didn't know. Um, so we're going to grab this here, and I'm going to start painting and isolating what I want unwrapped. And in this case, I can get a little bit of the neck if I want to. I'm not going to get the ears. You want to make sure you, you, you don't do that as you're uh, using your selection tool. Unfortunately, this selection tool, when you double click on this guy, um, let's look at our stroke here. We should be able to, in this case, he's symmetrical. We should be able to do reflection pretty well. Unfortunately, if your character is not symmetrical, and I think he may not be, it may not be bang on perfect, but it gives you a definite head start when selecting your face. Look at that, pretty cool, huh? So we're selecting our areas on this guy. I can go around. Now I don't have to work twice as hard. Sometimes you can just use the lasso tool and just deselect what you don't want. But I'm gonna do it this way really quick. It's a slightly faster than that other way I just mentioned. Grab it, I'll grab a little bit more of the neck here. Not too much, just a little bit. And uh, the one thing we wanna avoid grabbing is we don't wanna grab the ocular cavity. And in this case, we probably want to separate the eyebrows. Um, I might just bring them along for the ride. It's just sometimes when you have these unique corners, Maya gets a little confused, and it won't be able to unwrap it the way that I'm uh, showing you here, as well as you'd like. Let's go and grab the brow here real quick. Go in here and fix some of that in just a second. There's the nose. And again, we have this on reflection for paint selection tools. So freaking cool. I love this guy. A lot of people don't know about this fella's existence, but he is amazing. And we're going to deselect the nostrils here in just a second because you don't want those guys in there. Go in here, in here, and we grab the mouth. Believe it or not, he does have a little bit of an opening. I do recommend you do that when it comes to rigging. Um, Mr. Daniel Jane did a great job. Just need to, uh, just a few tweaks we need to do on the rig. So cool. So we see this selected. And I'm going to grab the last part, kind of the interior of the eye. Not too much. 
let's put it on one mode so it's a little bit easier to select things now and what that is is when you hit the hotkey in one in Maya that allows you to put it in its true poly form because it was in smooth preview mode so you see he's pretty low poly overall and we kind of left him this way so that we could have the option later on to maybe smooth him and you will notice the three key it actually works pretty well when he's in smooth preview it's a pretty decent representation of the main character all right let's get a little bit underneath the ears there we go so it looks like we've pretty much got everything we need there's a little bit of the interior of the ocular cavity which we can isolate and i'll show you how to do that in a second but everything else looks like we grabbed it pretty well let me show you how that works so we'll go to show isolate view selected now maya's only showing us what we have selected at this moment and we can see just by rotating our camera there's some areas we're missing so let's go back and turn this back on aha so we need to select the back of the head here don't want to leave this guy out hit control to deselect what you don't need again that's control to do that and we'll grab the back of the head there there we go so we got pretty much everything we need we just need to deselect some of this and i'll show you a quick way to do that again we'll go to view isolate selected and if you see areas you don't want all you really oh, let me hit the f key here all you really need to do is hit control and paint on them and when you do we can actually deselect what we don't need nope control z too much let me rotate the camera here get a little bit of better angle we're going to cheat a little bit and get up close and what i'm doing is just trying to put my camera in such a way so that i'm only messing with this guy and in this case we can actually turn off our reflection because it may mess things up hit control zoom out hit control all right let's go and rotate the camera don't want this guy rotate the camera again and i knew there was one more i think there he is you little jerk we're going to deselect this guy double check I think we're good sometimes my will actually make that disappear but in this case it's kind of sticking around which is fine as long as we deselect what we don't need we got a little bit of the interior of the lips we don't want so we'll take care of that in just a second and if you're not really confident with this new tool just go in here and just select deselect as you go if you think you're a better deselector now you're probably wondering why I have a cutout area on the top of the head that's not because I messed up selecting that's there because I um, have hair on him and his hair fits on top of his head and in results we don't need the top of the scalp and he's wearing a cowboy hat so there's a lot of variables in there he's like that guy there and we'll go in here and do the ear these like this rotate make sure it's just one whole quad and I think we're almost done just have the eyeball to deal with oops Whenever your camera goes too far, just hit the F key and it brings you back to reality. And this time I'm just going to use the simple select, click, click, click. There we go. Got that. Because I don't need the ocular cavity for this. I don't recommend you do. You could probably even remove some of the inner eyelid on there. You may not need that. Oh, there's a little bit of weirdness going on that's sticking around. That's okay. And again, we'll get the rest of the ocular cavity. There we go. So we got this all deselected. We got it isolated to our object. We're now going to go to show, view selected. There's the our dude, man of the hour. <laughs> Luckily, I did not select any of the eyebrows, which was pretty cool. So what you would do at this point when you have this all set up? Ah, look, a glitch by Maya. Maya decided to uh, jack up all the geo in there and mess that up that's fine whatever that's having more to do with the rig and removing it after the fact no big deal looks like he's a superhero with spikes that's fine so we're going to grab the head here we're going to go to our polygons and we're going to go to create polygons we're going to go in here and there's a several ways we could do this we could use a planner map from the front view and then cut the uvs in the back and unfold it but we're going to do something a little bit different. This is an old school way of doing things, and it actually works pretty well. Your head, if you look at it, is shaped 
not like a complete circle. None of our heads are. They're more like a cylindrical object. So what we're going to do is go to Create UVs, and we're going to go to Cylindrical Mapping. And I'm going to hit Project. And we'll see that we have a cylindrical breakdown of our head. And again, the key here is to make sure that you unwrap or actually deselect the interior of the eye and the ears because I'm going to maybe do a little bit of unfolding to complement what we have. Let's go to our UV Texture Editor and you'll see it does a pretty darn good job of that head unwrap. Look at that, pretty bang on. And we'll turn on our toggle shaded UV display on. Let's go and move them off to the side here for a second. And the only area where it's getting a little weird is like on around the chin and we'll fix that in just a second here. So with that, I'm going to go to my interactive display, which shows up when you create your UVs. And I'm going to grab the red square and stretch it in a little bit. So what this does is tries to encompass the rest of the head. Now you can stretch that back out by opening that up if you want to. And that actually can help sometimes depending on the shape of your model. So now with them all set up here, I'm going to grab go to UVs, select just a few. And every once in a while, Maya will give you trouble with this. I'm going to go to select select shell and another way to do that is say control right click and to shell so with that selected I'm gonna to go to my unfold tool and unfold this guy and look at that does a pretty good job I'm unfolding it so we get a nice organic palette or excuse me um, pelt I should say for our character now when you do this be careful you can go too far go too much and it might get a little weird and it may not look like your character anymore so to test things out, the best thing to do, let me go back a few steps so we can see how the relationship is on this. We're going to add a checkerboard pattern to this guy. So I'm going to assign a new material. Just a simple Lambert is fine for this test. I'm going to go in here and grab, under Lambert 2, let's grab my checkerboard pattern. I gotta find out where he's at. I don't like using my as default because it kind of sucks. And here we talked about that before. There we go. Source images. Let's go and hit open. Hit the six key to see what it looks like. So we can see in context what his face currently looks like. Now ignore the other parts. Those aren't unwrapped at this moment. And there are some little bit of errors happening. That's what happens. You go for 2012, 2013. I'm gonna dim that texture in the background by clicking on image toggle off. Always good to do that so you can see your UVs. In this case, though, we have them off to the side, so I don't have to worry about it too much. So I'm going to hit Control, right click, to shell. Oh, got to make sure I select it. UVs, grab it. There we go. Control, right click, to shell. Gets the whole thing. And now we can unwrap this, and you can see in context how this is unfolding and starting to look a little bit better with less distortion. And you do got to be careful. This is what I mean. Look at the chin. It'll start to get a little weird on you. Maya's trying to evaluate this guy overall best he can you unfold a little bit more, a little bit more there so we got a little bit of texture stretch at the chin but you'll also notice the chin has a larger 3d space so your uvs do need to match in some way the shape of your head and pelt can be deceiving because it's not always as good as it tries to be so you go and lower this a little bit more there you go so that actually looks a little bit better if we go back a few steps and we go to the original one, which actually is pretty nice. So it does a pretty good job by default. But I wanted to make you aware of the unwrap tool or the unfold tool, which allows you to do it. You can also do un old school unfold, which is found here. What this does, it opens up your um, UVs and allows it to uh, have a little more control if we go to the properties here. There is an icon for it, but we're going to focus on the properties here because a lot of times you have to mess with these first. You can pin the UV border, and you can pin uh, UVs overall. You can pin selected UVs or pin unselected UVs, which is nice. So I could go in here and grab the chin area, which gives us a little bit of trouble. And in that chin area, not using the interactive unfold, I can go in here, go to my unfold tool, open it up again, and I can say, you know what, I want you to pin unselected UVs. So we'll pin those and pin the UV border. We don't want the UV border messing things up. And I'm going to unwrap this on the vertical plane. So I can hit apply. And you can see it does a pretty good job except for maybe the tip of the chin. And that's where we can use the interactive fold tool. I can grab that area at the tip of the chin and unfold it locally. Look at that. 
does a pretty good job working the working with both of those together all right so that's a real quick rundown on how to approach the head the next thing we're going to do is talk about the limbs and so forth and how to tackle that guy